All right, it's a Friday. It's a freaky Friday, and why not, man? It's July 10th. And it's 95 degrees out there in the Mile High City. And we thank you for joining us. The Modern Eater Show continues. And, of course, we want to tell you SummerDinnerSeries.com. SummerDinnerSeries.com. That's where it's at. Have dinner with us all summer long. It is a good time. We just had our first dinner with Chef Kerry Baird this last Tuesday. A sold-out dinner in the well-appointed, very spacious, al fresco dining right there in front of the Blue Bear. Chef Kerry Baird and Blake Edmonds, they put it together. The sun was setting. The blue bear was lit up. It was a beautiful evening, they would say. Wasn't it? And we want you to join us for more dinners. We have one of our summer dinner she- series chefs coming up. Her name's Chef Dana Rodriguez. She doesn't need any introduction, but I'll tell you, we're very excited to see what happens. She's one of the four regional chefs getting ready to win that James Beard Award and take it on home. I hope Denver, Colorado gets that. We've got four good ones here. On the show today at 2.40, we're going to go to John Deffenbaugh, and he is a project manager in the Rhino Arts District. They're doing al fresco seating at its finest. Just closing off Larimer, Brian. Yep. Yep. It's Larimer Square. It. It's an interesting thing seeing the, uh, the extension of patios and how that's working because I think some it's a really good idea. Others are fail. Yeah. And, and I don't know. What do you think, Brian, when you're sitting outside and they've extended it out into the street and then you have a, a concrete barrier right next to you and you're going to get some exhaust? And that's a difficult proposition. You've got to do it right if you're going to do it. Yeah. You know, put some planters in there. Make it look nice. Put some temporary walls. Don't just like, you know, half-ass it, right? And the host of restaurants near me will join us at 3 p.m., Larry Hurst. And uh, in the meantime and in between time, I want to get a clip up on, my, um, up on my computer. This is something that just it, – it, 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 all summer long. And I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll have her enter the conversation now. Chef, are you with us? I'm here. Hi, Chef. Do you remember the advice that you gave us all to get through COVID? Eat, drink, and fuck. <laughs> I, don't, I don't even need to play the clip. We got a new... Oh, no. I got that. <laughs> so we all followed your advice to the T. Lots of new Everybody babies coming. Very happy. <laughs> and we'd, we'd love for you to know we didn't do it just in this room. We actually expanded out. And hopefully, did you follow your right. did you follow your own advice, Chef? Of course, don't you see my smile? Like, come on. <laughs> That's how you do it. <laughs> Here it is. You're in the restaurant now. Right now, where are you, Chef? Uh, I'm at working class. We're about to open service. Uh, we just reopened the restaurants um, with the 50% capacity outside and inside. So, yep. Now, last time we spoke to you, you said, I'm in no rush. I'm going to go slow. I want to make sure yep. that people don't get sick. And if they do, I don't want to get shut down again. It could be more damage. What brought you to the thought process to the time where you said, you know what? I'm ready. Oh, I lose you for a second. Sorry. No. Uh, I get a phone call. For my landlord, maybe he's won the rent. Shit. Um, <laughs> you know what? When I say that, yeah, when we get uh, the 50% capacity, uh, we see it again like we always do with our partners, and we decide that we don't like to rush things. We wanted to see how people react. We wanted to see how people is doing up there and how other states are doing. If people is actually being responsible and follow the rules, that they're important for us. So we went we just reopened a month after. Um, we just opened on Wednesday for the 50% inside. And we had a couple tents on the parking lot. Uh, we make it really cool with planters and lights and make it fun. So we're ready to start making money and keep our business. That's fantastic. So you're locked and loaded and ready to go again. How's everything else? How's the staff? Were you able to bring people back? Give us an idea of what's going on there. Well, obviously, it's, you know, you have to kind of follow what the rules are these days. 50% capacity uh, that means you need to hire 50% of your capacity because you can only do 50% of what you used to do. And at the end of the day, uh, at the end of the day, it's not, um, 
it's not really the 50 percent we used to do right it's so different these days people are still hesitating to go out uh, i think it's gonna be it's gonna be difficult to bring everybody and work at the same time the beauty of this is that some people are still in unemployment and the other half come back with us so everybody's just again to we have more you know more business so we can bring more people in house fantastic you've got yes. a you got a fish in front of you there that looks like it's met its match at this point in time. What are you going to do to that fish, Chef? Break it down? Well, I have a, uh, do you remember when I told you about we create SOS to save business? So I think we sell 18 private dinners, and I'm in those. So tonight is one of those nights. I have one tomorrow and one on Monday. So I've been doing two or three a week. Uh, we start doing our power buyout days, and it's the same thing that we promote at that time. Uh, thanks to you guys, too. Uh, thank you for promoting that. We have a lot of car wash. We have dinners. We've been, we've been doing some stuff to say, or kitchen, or stuff, and, you know, or businesses. So tonight is one of those dinners, and I love to make always, I love hamashi, one of my favorite fish. And I always make our chile or ceviche or something refreshing with heirloom tomatoes, whatever is in season these days. Uh, and that's exactly what I'm going to be doing now because I have to prep for my dinner at 5.30 tonight. I'm sure it's sold out, right? Yeah, so we, we do dinners, you know, we sell six people. I go and cook at their house uh, with wow. food and wine uh, for $1,000. So everybody's you know, they like that idea, and we sold a lot of those dinners. And also, I've been doing the same thing on the patios, but only for 25 people at the time. So you can come and snack and drink, and the rest you can do it later uh, after you get fun here at, at Working Class or Super Mega Bien. So you can choose any of the patios. But the beauty is that I'm cooking there with the people, and they enjoying the time and all of that. So I think that's very... People need that. You know, these days everybody's been in their house for so long that they need the attention. They need to be served. They need to be uh, feeling that uh, what they're eating is safe. So that's very important. I'm really mad right now. Why is that? Well, because, Why? Because you don't buy one? Well, because tomorrow's my birthday and my boys are here right now and they should have got. Uh, because, are you kidding me? For $1,000, you'll cook for six people? 25 people, she said. No, six, right? Hey. If you, if you send me your money, I'll go and cook for you. How about that? <laughs> Even if I go down. I love it, Chef. Uh, what's your Venmo? We'll do it right now. <laughs> so give us, an I, uh, give us an idea of what your capability. I, I'm just really fascinated by you going to somebody's uh, wherever, residence, or, and cooking for them yeah. and their family. What, give us an idea how you go through and create a menu. I'll bet you a lot of people be interested in doing this. Well... You know, the interesting thing is, like, I have a lot of regulars who support my restaurants, and they want to get those dinners. So other people are people that they never been at the restaurant. So they have no idea my style of cooking. They don't know the menu of working class and super mega bien. So you always send the menu and give them the options. I always do, you know, a small appetizer pass uh, with some cool mixed drink. And then I always say, uh, do you want to do a beer dinner, wine? Uh, spirits, whatever you guys like, I want to make you happy. You're giving me your money to save my business. Yeah. I'll cook whatever you want. And I always offer, you know, fish, meat, salad, and dessert. So a little bit of everything. And I just send the menu. They approve it or they say I have a lot of dairy allergy people in my family. I have gluten free. So I always figure the menu that is good for them. And so far, is everybody's been so happy. So Wow. Some of those people, they actually want a second dinner. I bet, I bet. Well, I don't know why not, Chef. Let's talk offline sometime. I think we can promote the hell out of these dinners and make you some money. I'm telling you what, right? Yeah, let's do yeah, that. Yeah, I actually did a recently. I did a cool dinner uh, on the stream, and it was for I think almost three hundred people, two hundred around. I don't. I'm not sure because I don't know the people who sign in. But it's actually really nice, you know, when you send. The ingredient list, they go to the store, they buy everything, and then we cook together for an hour. Three courses, and I can stop if I'm going too fast, and they want to learn how to make desserts, and they want to learn how to make the empanadas or chickpea croquettes, and 
it's it's really fun you know yeah. i wish i could make a lot of money out of that so i can close the restaurants right now you wouldn't do that I'm kidding. you wouldn't do that <laughs> anyway i was gonna say um so we have a dinner coming up with you let's see what's the date of your dinner it's august 4th it's on the 4th Yep, Chef Dana Rodriguez. It'll be a Tuesday night. We we built a nice outdoor kitchen, Chef, and um, boy, a spacious patio. It was really Colorado looking. We had you know five courses, and we're looking forward to your dinner. Can you give us a sneak pre- uh, peek of what your menu may be like that night, so we can start to source those products for you? Yeah, I mean, like I say, I always like to offer you know like fish, meat. Um, some good salad with all the ingredients that they are in season right now. So we're looking into local farms. Obviously, I always use one thing that I love is Colorado lamb. That's one of my favorite things to cook, and that's going to be on the menu for sure. I'm going to do something with um, this amazing uh, place here, a farm in Colorado, with heirloom tomatoes. So something with heirloom tomatoes, maybe some watermelon. I make my own uh, smoked goat cheese. Or burrata, we make our own in the house. Um, I don't know, a lot of refreshing ingredients, and most of those are going to be from from Colorado. No, all of them. We're going to get everything for yeah. you from Colorado. So awesome, Chef. We- I love goat. I love lamb. We have a lot of pork here in Colorado too. So you know, I can cook anything that uh, that is locally for this event. It's my first one over there, so. I'm excited to do that with you guys, and it's going to be fun. It is going to be a blast. Hopefully, and I know you're busy as heck, but we would love to take you out for an afternoon to source some of these ingredients. We know a local lamb rancher in northern Colorado called Harper Feeders. I say we go, uh-huh. get, I say we go get a whole lamb. Let's do it. What, what do you think? Butcher the whole thing here, and it's going to be amazing. That would be maybe fantastic. Maybe make some, I don't know, maybe we can do... So two different lamb two ways so we can make sausage with it over and we can do a lot of good stuff. So, so, um, so if you can, if you can do that, that'd be great to me. Like Monday, Tuesday, we close the restaurants. I can go outside and do whatever yes. we want. And let's go and you know, I want to get the best and the fresh ingredients that we can get for that. Yeah. For that dinner. Well, let's talk about real quick, and and I know you got to go here shortly, just a couple more for you. Brian uh, and and Chef, it'll be August 4th. What's going to be prime in Colorado on August 4th? Oh, we're going to, we should have some corn. That's going to be something special. We should, I mean, we're going to be full swing with all the peppers. So remember our friends on the Palisade on the Western Slope? I bet you they have some pasillas and some of the habaneros and the jalapenos. Fun stuff there. We'll probably still have peaches if she wants. We might have a little bit of Colorado apples, um, but we'll definitely be late season stuff. So it'll be there'll be tons of those types of things: squashes, peppers, corn. will be here. Melons, cantaloupe for sure should be here. Cantaloupe. Beautiful. Yep. So we'll, we'll have a bunch of fun stuff to be able to draw from. Okay. I mean, if I can talk to any of those guys, farmers, if if you have some. Uh, Peaches right now, I always like to make really good preserves with my own mezcal, my own brand, to use it like with the beef that we're going to use or the pork or the lamb or one of the appetizers. That would be really nice to to get it. Even if it's early, you can start making, you know, the sauces and everything with that. Chef, how many pounds? You want like 20 pounds of peaches? I'll get to that for you next week. Yep, that would be awesome. Okay, okay, perfect. Wait, I'll you get went, that and you went way too fast with that. Uh, Chef, could you just spend uh, a minute to talk about your mezcal? Yes, uh, so I'm producing my own uh, mezcal and tequila. It's the brand is, uh, you know, my nickname is Loca, so it's Doña Loca. Uh, I'm competing with Don Julio and all of those fuckers, right? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> right? No copy. Uh, They're competing so with you. The, the party, party is going to be around September, October. And yeah, it, the logo is pretty cool. It's my hands kind of like giving something because that's, that's what I do, uh, holding the agave plant. And it's 100% organic. We're the only Palenque in Oaxaca who use uh, spring waters. So it's really, really cool product. And it's more like to educate people about, we always talk about sustainable food, sustainable buildings. But when it becomes to go to the bar and get shed face, you don't think about what you put in your body. And I think it's very important that people start looking at a good product um, that is actually good and you don't have that bad hangover next day. 
I love you so much. You know, you were the first lady I ever drank uh, tequila with in the alley in Larimer. <laughs> oh, shit. Don't say that. <laughs> hey, hey, chef. That's a lot of bad stories from me in the alleys. <laughs> <laughs> where, where is that available for folks to be able to get some? Um, that's going to be probably to the end of the year that it's going to be in retail stores and probably Marcy's and some of other places. And, of course, it's going to be in our restaurants and a lot of good friends that they want to support uh, support me and that. They're going to put it on their bars. So now, do- as soon as we can open the bars and see people there, you will see the bottles around. Cool. Is there any way we can sample a little on the 4th or no? Probably not. I think I'm going to bring a couple of bottles so people can at least see the logo. Yeah. And especially if I'm going to make something with the, with the peaches and mezcal, I will bring some for everybody too. Okay, last to one. It. Last one for you, Chef, and we'll let you get back to work. I um, made a phone call to Denise Mickelson to reach out and say, hey, do you want to come to one of these dinners, Denise? And here's the lineup. And, and she said, wow, what a great lineup. You know what? There's one dinner that I would really enjoy going to. Guess, well, there you go. She wants to go to, <laughs> she wants to, go to your dinner, Chef. So Denise Mickelson will be at the dinner as well. Awesome. So, That's awesome. Thank you so much. You're going to have a great time. I know you're about community. I know you're about local. I know you're about great ingredients. I know you're about sustainability. It's a great fit. We are in so much love with you, and we can't even believe you're going to come play with us that night. But thank you for doing it. I'm so excited. Thank you so much, all of you guys, for the support, for helping us, and to remember our places. Thanks, thank Chef you, Dana Chef. Rodriguez. All right. That was a good one. We're going to uh, break off because we have some uh, topics that we want to cover. Brian, Jay, did you know they're expanding patios everywhere? The Rhino Arts District at 240, we're going to be joined by John Deffenbaugh. He's a Scottish lad. He's the project manager for the uh, Rhino Art District expansion to patios and uh, to the streets. I love it when it's done right. Yeah. 250 expansions were granted. 250. Yeah, that's huge. Did you hear, though, Dana? Though, Right off the bat, what she said about hers. Yeah. Tent, lights, flowers, yeah. planters. Yeah. Good stuff. I'll like, make it like an extension of this is you. This is a representation of your restaurant. Go, Take it seriously. Yeah, go berserk, right? Yeah, totally. I mean... Take it seriously and, and keep people engaged because remember we were talking to that chef in Vail that said, you know, I only offer three things, ingredients, ambience, and the story. And he says, right now, I can't tell a story behind a mask. The ambience, everybody's six feet away. Everything's plastic or paper. There's no ambience anymore. The only thing I have to offer is ingredients as a chef. That was sad. That was heartbreaking because of what's going on. And so... You know, this is, we have opportunities to change that, I think. On the stream, uh, Little Rich Schneider, he's on there. He says he loves Dana. Uh, Maya Parrish, she, she was in this kitchen once. How are you? Um, I'd like to get her on the show. She loves Chef Dana, of course, as well. I think Ziri was on the stream. You guys want to sound off. What do you think about just putting patio or expansions into streets with a barricade next to you are you i mean are you okay with the would you go sit in that no at all i don't like uh that. and i don't want to call anybody else out but i'll call the street out i want to talk about when we get back from this break i want to talk about um expansions in general but people that are really doing it right we want to hear about and then other places that it may be a miss and we can help them out and brainstorm i love brainstorming Let's do that. We'll play uh, some words from our sponsors, and we'll come back and talk about the expansion. And also, did the governor sign into law alcohol to go ex- uh, extension? We'll find out when we come back on the Modern Eater Show. Hey guys, Chris Johnson here, owner of Rome Sausage, your hyper local source for all things sausage awesomeness. My family is proud to carry on the fine traditions of Rome's founder Jerry Rome by producing a variety of amazing sausage in small batches with an eye on quality, not quantity. Every batch is made here in the great state of Colorado by hand mixing spices, utilizing lean cuts of pork to make an outstanding product. 
Sourcing ingredients and materials locally, we are committed to supporting local vendors, chefs, restaurants, and the entire Colorado food scene. Getting hungry yet? Brats, Italian, breakfast, hot Polish, green chili, chicken apple, and the world's best chorizo. You can source all of our sausage through a variety of food service distributors. If your distributor doesn't carry it, call us. We'll come direct. You want a custom item? We'll do that too. Samples, and of course, sausage jokes, can be had by contacting me directly at chris at romesausage.com or by phone at 303-296-7663. The modern eater loves Rome sausage, and I know you will too. <laughs> hey, Zach Kreider here, Colorado Mills Sunflower Products out of Lamar, Colorado, your only local source grown from a local crop to produce a local oil for local chefs. You can find it at Shamrock Foods, What Chefs Want, Seattle Fish Company. Uh, let me try it one more time, then we'll see. Hey, restaurants, we're glad you're reopening from Colorado Mills Sunflower Oil. We'll see you soon. <laughs> First, we partner with the best farmers in the world, and then we tell them, we will take it all. Process whole spices daily, blend custom spices to order, keep it fresh, safe, and flavorful, all so that you can get back to doing what you do best. So whether you're a restaurant, a food manufacturer, or an at-home cook, be sure to visit The Spice Guy at www.thespiceguys. Hey guys, the moderator, this is Rich O'Brien with Elevation Food Service Reps. I'm here with one of our sales, a newly appointed hospitality specialist, Kalina Hillier. Hi. And we're here in our showroom, and uh, we've got our bar set up, we've got a lot of time. Come see us, come see what we've got, and Kalina can help you guys out in the world of hospitality with anything. Um, take a little journey into the 38th Avenue kitchen just to see what's going on in here. And uh, as I come in here, I'm noticing, uh, Howard, what are you doing? Nothing. Sean, what are you doing? Nothing. Nothing? Look at this beautiful equipment in here. Look at this beautiful... Chefs, restaurateurs, anybody that has anything to do with food service, come on over. We'd love to help you with menu development. Love to show you everything about equipment. And uh, maybe we'll even have a few pops. It's a busy Friday, and it's Friday, July 10th. 96 degrees out. It's supposed to be the hottest day of the year today. Did today? you know that? That's today? what they announced at yeah, 6 a.m. Yeah, it usually this is right around this time. Uh, yeah. Jay, you loving it? You loving the heat? Oh, well, man. <laughs> wait, it's so a, this we're going to talk about <laughs> patio extension in a second, but I do want to check in with Jay. Generally, Jay, so for years now, you haven't had any AC or uh, swamp cooler in your home. No. And How is that working out for you on the hottest day of the year? It was 88 in my house last night when and I went to sleep. Yeah. It was 88. And uh, I sleep terrible. I think and no wonder uh, you've been the past couple of days you've had some problems. For get, your brain's frying. It's like an egg. <laughs> well, uh, listen, man. You know, it's if like I could, an egg. Well, Jake. explain it. Explain it when it happens in February, then. But uh, I wish I could blame it on the heat. It doesn't help. I know that much. But it's it's it. My home is miserable. Is he over medium? Are you over medium? Yeah. Over right. hard? I, I'm, I'm I'm over it. Are you over <laughs> it? Yeah. I'm over it. And every year, right about this time, and uh, I tell myself. Um, well, I won't go another year like this. Yeah. We, I'll get an AC or a swamp cooler. And, and I looked into the swamp cooler thing, and I no, looked into the no, AC you thing. It. You didn't do it. Well, oh, I didn't do it because th they want money. Yeah. I and I, and they, want, <laughs> they want a lot more than I thought they did. I thought I, we had I a fix they for they you last year. Anyway, Jay's hot. He gave, Greg gave me a, <laughs> an air unit, and it Jay's won't fit hot. in my window, that's and he doesn't a, believe me. That's and, all right. and, uh, Why don't you just cut out a bigger hole in the window? Patios, Greg, <laughs> patios. <laughs> patios. No, um, coming up, 240 uh, patio extensions in Rhino. They're among the lists of doing that. It's also, as I look to the, um, to the press releases that we have, we have a few press releases today. I'm going to have Brian read one of them because yesterday he laughed at me for – how I yeah. read. I've got my glasses out. You've got now. your glasses. <laughs> and then the uh, alcohol to go law was indeed signed, the extension until uh, July 1st, 2021, which is a great step in just restaurants trying to recover. And, you know, and those two things, right? Patios and, and uh, sending booze out the door. Those are the two things that are trying to mitigate the loss yeah. uh, or compensate the loss for indoor dining. Uh, which just seems to be, and, and again, it's winter or summertime, but um, one of one of the things that's um, very difficult right now to navigate yeah. through is half capacity. 
I got a poll question, though, which would be like... Do you, you have a poll question? Yeah, do you think Polis is doing a good job? Do you think... Uh, I, you know, it's... I'll I, tell you what. He said he said in uncertain terms uh, today or yesterday that uh, wear masks. We're starting to see an uptick. I'm not calling it a spike yet. I'm seeing an uptick. And, and he, he's warning people that he'll have to take actions. What does that mean in my mind? I'm probably hypersensitive to it, but it means restaurants. Yeah. Well, right. and, every, and everything. I mean, did you see today Hancock? Hancock was a little bit more direct today. He said, we are doing a bad job. About two hours ago, he did a press conference. And Wearing said, masks. Yeah, we're doing a bad job. With COVID, yeah. as citizens. Grab my computer, Jay. I want it. SummerDinnerSeries.com. I'm telling you guys. SummerDinnerSeries.com. We got uh-huh. the food for you. All the delicious Colorado ingredients from our road trip. This is, uh, just to give you an idea, this is last week's dinner. That's Chef Kerry Baird right there. I wonder if I can make this even bigger. I can. Sweet. Um, that's Chef Kerry Baird showing off some of her food. And look at those steaks. That's called a Denver cut, you guys. And Centennial Cuts out of Fowler County, Colorado, supplied us with this cool new cut of beef. And, boy, I mean, look at the marbling on that. It's delicious. It was a home run. People loved it. But uh, Chef Kerry Baird, you see what's on there as far as uh, seasoning goes? Salt and pepper. Yeah. Yeah, that Salt was pepper. it. That was it. And, and actually, the rancher was really happy with that. Blake Edmonds, you know, hot shot chef in his own right, there was sous chefing for, for his girlfriend. I know. Isn't that cool? Carrie I, that's Bear. one of the things. You've got to be so lucky because, like, on some of these nights, not only do you get one awesome chef, you get two. But look at that. They're literally cooking right there. That's on the patio of Pizza Republica, right? Oh, yeah. I, hey, look I was looking this. up. Do you remember what it is? Look what at the rocker truck. <laughs> Do you remember what that Denver cut steak is? Do you remember what that is? Yeah, it's a, I don't know where it was, but there's a flat iron. There's a. It was a mix between a tenderloin and something else, I thought he said. Well, yeah, in that same it general was a area. killer steak, though. Look at this. We're having fun on the uh, patio of Pizza Republica. This was afterwards where we're enjoying uh, imbibing in some of Rocker Spirits. There's Dustin Evans. He brought the trash truck. I mean, this is the local good times that you're having here. This is at the table. There's Rich O'Brien and, um, you know, just people enjoying the time. There's Carrie. There's those steaks. There is the rancher. You hear, when you go to a summer dinner series, you hear um, from the purveyors. That's Luke Larson from Centennial Cuts. Uh, That's the line of food coming out as they're plating. I mean, you can just see everything's done right. Everything is done perfectly. Indoors, we have the uh, buyout of the restaurant, so the kitchen is there, if need be, inside. As a backup? This picture right here, Carrie Baird took herself and said, here, I'll give it to you. She airdropped it to my phone said, give it to Jay. Jay said, I don't think it's a very good picture. Did I say that? Yeah. You said, I got better pictures. Well, I do have better ones. But, but that's, that's a Carrie pic- took it. Well, it's the vertical thing. And she wanted to show them on like. the microphones. And uh, more plating. Biker Jim helped out that night as a sous chef. And there's Carrie Baird, more of the Denver steaks. Someone's at the door, me and Dustin Evans. We're talking on the microphone. You know what's tricky, babe? What? I can't see I know it live time. See it. So I, I, I want to give, wanna give you a little love over there, in. but uh, it's tricky. But I'll tell you, listen, D- Dustin rocked it, having his truck there, pushing it over the edge and the way he did that. He's just such a nice, friendly guy. The fact that George Eater was there greeting the people, coming out, and actually behind helping do prep stuff for Carrie. I thought that that just, the collaboration between those guys was, was awesome. Everything was delicious. Yeah. Everybody had a great time. And who do we have here? Good afternoon. <laughs> Fire exp- inspection during the uh, show. <laughs> Would you like me to explain right sure. now? Or you, well, I called to schedule a fire inspection, and they're here to do it, uh, not to call me back and schedule it. So that makes sense. You know, what would you like me to do? It's, well, no, what can it's, you do? Nothing. This, we, yeah. Everything's perfect around here, so we roll with it. Yeah, everything's good. The fire so. inspection. Just don't say anything about that uh, extension cord. <laughs> We're doing the show right now. The Modern Eater Show continues, and uh, again, live broadcasting. No man, it's master. But there's some photos. It just shows you, give you an idea of Summer Dinner Series. You should get your tickets. SummerDinnerSeries.com. We have seven of them left. 
seven good ones for you. Where's my sheet? I mean, I still know. I question. Do you have a favorite? I know it's like your be- your favorite child or something like that, right? But uh, who's a favorite? Sh- I mean, it's hard because I'll tell you. Talking to Dana brought back such memories. She's she was one of my first female chefs in Colorado that I just fell in love with. She really was. Dana Rodriguez. I wonder. I wonder what would happen though if um, I'm, if he has any questions to get answered. If just politely asking him if he could come back, maybe. I don't know. Well, I'll, well, I'll tell you what. You guys have a couple of minutes here before the next guest. What? Uh, yeah. What time is it? Two thirty-six. Two thirty-six. Yeah, we do have a couple of minutes left. So I want to talk about the patio outside variances that are happening right now, and the expansion is exactly who our next guest is coming up, John. Deffenbaugh. John Deffenbaugh is a project manager in the Rhino Arts District, and John is going to be coming up to talk about um, exactly what those expansions are outside there. But I'm really interested to see how that's going to work out for Larimer, right? Show them the pictures of all the food that we give the fire department. Did they, uh, <laughs> they show them the pictures of all the food we donate to the fire department? They, uh, I would say the thing that's interesting about Larimer is, is they do that a, a couple times a year, and I think it works out pretty well. So I think they should have it nailed down. You'd like to think. Um, I'd almost so. Well, here's the deal. So uh, as I'm driving home yesterday, I live in Cherry Creek, a native of Cherry Creek, and for. Um, the past few days, I wanted to just see what they were doing as far as those expansions because we've been seeing that in quite a few places. Now, what I saw on 2nd Avenue was concrete barriers that went out to where those parking spots would be, right? Uh So those concrete barriers were, uh, first of all, just so traffic doesn't plow into you while you're eating. Yeah. And, and, And secondly, so this is 2nd Avenue in Cherry Creek. Right, so you can picture this. You're coming down from Whole Foods. There's the coffee shop on your left, and Blue Island Oyster Bar, yep. and then on the right hand side you've got North, and and as you continue down you've got Cherry Cricket on your left hand yep. side, and that's where it starts beginning. You know, there's your True Food. Oh, okay. There's so like f- right at True Food in that that crate, not Crate and Barrel, but there's some furniture shop we, right there. Yeah, right along that line. So yeah. as you, as you're going down the street, that's where the concrete barriers start to begin. Now I get it. True Food is a delicious restaurant. That's where you would love to just sit back, relax in their already um, in their already seating. What what we're seeing is. People are really pimping out their decks, right? They're putting planters out there. They're putting, you know, make trees, whatever they can do to make it a little bit more palatable. Um, there are some places that really need to step that game up. Yeah. And other places that are doing it fantastic. Our next guest is actually on a roving camera. I already am in love with Rhino Ooh, Art District of Outlook. I like this. And he's, he, he's a Scottish man. I wish I had a better accent than that. I don't have a good one. Uh, let, let's, hear, let's hear the accent, then we'll break and come back. Let's hear that beautiful accent you have there. It's really, really hot out here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we don't want your phone to melt. We'll break off. We'll come back. We've got John Deffenbaugh coming up next on the Modern Eater Show. Hey, guys. It's Rebecca Berry with Hot Schedules Powered by Fourth here. And you know what they say. If you can't take the heat, then you should get out of the kitchen. But with Hot Schedules powered by Forth, we want you in the kitchen while we put out those fires. With Hot Schedules, we help to mitigate risk with HR, payroll, and tax compliance solutions so you can continue to put those plates on the table for your guests. Today's a big day. We're reopening. So call me, Rebecca.Barry at Forth.com. That's Rebecca.Barry at Forth.com. With Hot Schedules by Forth, we've got you covered. Hey, Modern Eater fans. I'm Don Trouble with the Annex by Art at Mills, and I just wanted to give you a heads up about some of the great things we've got going on locally in the state. We're headquartered right here, and we're working with farmers in the San Luis Valley to bring you amazing Colorado quinoa. It's just like the South American stuff, but grown locally. We've got transitional wheat flour that's grown by farmers in Colorado and surrounding states who are in the process of of turning their fields into organic. So we're taking that transitional wheat and turning it into flour, and now it's available for you to cook and bake with. And last but not least, we're now cleaning grain berries in Denver. So things like spelt, or wheat berries, uh, or pearl barley. Those are things that we're now doing right here locally and are available to you. Can't wait to share it with you. Hey there, barbecue all-star. This is your year. So what if you weren't drafted? The only draft you need to be worried about is actually spelled D-R-A-U-G-H-T, and it's adult for the word beard. 
It's barbecue season, baby. Now get out there and grill your ass off. Brews is back. Hi, I'm Charlie Gottenkenny, brewmaster at Brews Beers. We have finally reopened, and our badass Belgian-style beers are flowing. Brews Beers has a huge selection of great beers on draft. Belgian IPAs, doubles, triples, white beers, saisons, and many more. Stop by our brewery tap room at 67th and Pecos in North Denver and bring your dog. Or swing by Brews Off Fax on the south side of Colfax in York. Both tap rooms are open from 2 to 9 p.m. seven days a week. There are large outdoor patios at both locations, and for your protection, Brews is following all CDC guidelines inside and out. You can still order beers from our website, brewsbeers.com, or come by to take out cans, bottles, and crowlers. And once again, you can enjoy our great beers in our tap rooms. Brews Beers, back open with plenty of Belgian-style badassery. Hey guys, it's Brian Rizzuto with Encore Energy, the guy who saves your businesses money on natural gas. I know these are crazy, crazy times right now. So while your business is working on increasing your sales, let me work on saving you guys money on your natural gas. I make it as easy as possible. Just provide 12 months worth of natural gas bills to me. I'll do the rest. I know you're really busy, so let me get to work for you. You can reach me at 720 two four five five seven seven one i look forward to hearing from you guys and let me try to save you some money in these crazy times okay the modern eater show continues it is a friday it is july 10th at 95 degrees tomorrow i turn 48 man where does the time go oh my goodness john deffenbaugh holding on right now john welcome to the modern eater show it's good to see your face we want to talk about what's going on down in rhino and uh, it looks like you guys are doing good stuff. We got a press release of the who, what, where, when, why. And um, it, it's really, here you go, Brian. Did you see this press release? Good to hear your voice, John. How are you? Good, thanks. Good. A little toasty out here, but great to see, great to see the patios being set up behind me and uh, just really all over Rhino as well. Yeah, no doubt, for sure. Well, why don't you do the setup rather than us read the press release? That's why we've got you on today. Uh, first of all, tell us a little bit about you and what you do. Sure. Um, thanks so much for having me. Uh, my name is John Deffenbaugh. I'm Project Director for Rhino Art District. Um, Rhino Art District is a nonprofit organization uh, set up to support artists, creatives, and local businesses uh, northeast of um, downtown Denver. Uh, we're a membership organization, so we gain income through membership and also through um, a business improvement district through the tax base. So um, one of the big things we've done this summer is to utilize part of that funding um, to support these local businesses uh, on Larimer Street, um, across the tracks around Zeppelin Station, Wazi and 35th, um, to expand their um, patio areas. Um, we applied for a roadway closure permits from the city um, obtained those, um, and then yesterday uh, set out the first of several closures on Larimer Street um, to allow these businesses to expand their patios so people can enjoy uh, food and drinking whilst also social distancing. So um, I heard your previous guest talk about, was it pimping, pimping up patios? Yes, pimping um, up the patios. That's exactly what's happening here. You can see um, ratio just behind me, um, some grass, some tents for shade. I kind of wish I was under one of those right now. Um, and then also I'll just turn around a little bit without making you seasick. Um, we've got Block Distilling in the distance behind me on the left and then Odell um, Brewery as well. So um, some great eating and drinking options here. Uh, some really interesting food partnerships happening as well. So for example, Block Distilling, uh, primarily a bar, um, have developed a relationship with um, working class. So you'll be able to um, have the wonderful spirits in block and also enjoy food from working class as well. So some really great patios and some really innovative nice. approaches to mix uh, food and dining experience. Now, some of those relationships, I'm sure, were born out of necessity, right? The block, that's a, boy, what a blessing that is to have Dana Rodriguez step in and say, I'll get you some food so you don't have to close down. And we're seeing a lot of that neighborhood that feeling of just camaraderie and, and banding together. Absolutely. And I think that's what's so wonderful to see and so um, unique to this area as well. It is that camaraderie, the community spirit, 
bars, restaurants supporting each other, the synergies between uh, food and drink, and also the variety taking place. You know, I'm on Larimer Street, um, which many people associate with one of the, the main parts of, of Rhino in this area. Um, but there's also um, the other side of the railway track, and the store and station, the great um, outdoor dining and drinking options. Um, the alleyway behind the Central Market as well, tables on that alley, um, so you can enjoy one of the many businesses um, in Denver Central Market and uh, have a comfortable table outside in shade there. Um, next weekend as well, uh, 25th Street will be shut down between uh, Larimer and Lawrence. So uh, Super Mega Bian, Deco, Working Class, Art Driver, um, they'll also have outdoor patio wares on 25th. So uh, really a lot going on right now. You know, if this goes well, hopefully it will become an event. Hey, John, have you had any of the business owners come to you and get really excited and they want to pimp out their patio bigger than anyone else in town? <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, that, would, that would be telling. I mean, I think really, you know, every, everyone, it has been such a community and team effort. There's not been any upmanship. There's really not been anyone trying to outdo each other. I think people generally recognize that uh, off back of each other um, effort. Um, so really a lot of teamwork here. Um, yeah. Radio behind me, they do to be going for it with their tents. Yeah. Hey, is there, John, is there a way that you can get inside that tent? I have a feeling your phone's getting hot. And I do want to talk to you for a couple more minutes before it melts down. Is there any way you can get under that tent? Well, they I'm just going to gate crash their tent, yeah. Yeah, let's see. He's turned into an outlaw right now. He's in the tent. Shades. How much better is that? Oh, that's good. That's good. Um, and, and I'm hoping that, yeah, you're recovering there. Okay, cool. You're in the – John's in the tent. He's at ratio. All right, we've got him in there. Now, John Deffenbaugh is the project manager for this, and I want to – we lost your video there. I wonder if his phone is getting hot. It's probably getting hot. Yeah. Dang it. Um, oh, he's back. You're back. Do you, is that bad? Yeah, you're back. Okay, yep. now we we're talking about pimping patios and, and, and what you guys do. So is this kind of a teamwork makes the dream work thing to where you guys are doing the, the, the advocacy and the variances for what you want to get done and you're kind of going out there and getting it as a collective? Or the, I'm, I'm trying to figure out how this mechanism works. Sure. Um, you know, we, we at Rhino, we see ourselves as a facilitator um, and an organizer to support individual businesses uh, in achieving their goals and aspirations, whatever that comes down to. Um, we're an advocator and a supporter. Um, and in this instance, there was clearly a desire from local bars and restaurants when the city announced their temporary outdoor seating program, uh, a desire um, from businesses to take advantage of that. Um, so there's, you know, obviously a very diverse um, and numerous uh, number of businesses on these blocks. Uh, we sense that um, and set up several working group meetings to understand that appetite and to gauge which uh, street closures to champion. Um, that uh, is really what led to the, the ones that are now being closed. The 2700 block, the 2900 block, 25th Street at Larimer Street, um, and then also our friends on the other side of the tracks around Zeppelin Station and the Source. Um, and so from that, um, we worked with the city to identify a coherent plan, which would show each of those closures on a single drawing, um, work with the city to push that through approvals, and then also be the facilitator through uh, funding the purchase of the barriers and the necessary infrastructure to create these closures. So really, uh, you know, using our resources via um, advocating, supporting, um, and then ultimately purchasing uh, what's necessary to, to make it happen. And so our, our day was yesterday when we set out these barriers. Um, and now it's great to see uh, the bars and restaurants taking advantage of the space that's been created. And I'm so grateful for the shade right now. Yes, good. Me too. And, and you look great there. And talking about doing it right, it looks like Ratio's not pulling out all the stops. And so it might understand that you, you guys, okay, it's all set and ready for you now. Each individual business goes out there and does what they want with their allotted amount of space. Is that how that works? Yeah, absolutely. Um, with the city, we worked out a, a plan which uh, identified patio areas for each business on each block. Um, 
you know, sometimes it's quite tricky because you've got businesses next to each other, opposite each other, and you've really got to work out how much space and deliver an equitable split. Um, so we went through a process with businesses in the city to identify that layout. Um, and that's now what businesses are working to. So the area I'm standing in just now is the area identified for ratio. Um, just further up, there are patios for Block and Odell. Um, yep, everyone really working within their footprint um, and all pre-agreed with the, with the city. Are there limit, limitations on really what they can do? Because I, I have a feeling, and it, it may turn out to be that way, kind of like how your neighbors approach Christmas time with their lights. Some neighbors, you know, don't do much about it. Other neighbors, neighbors just go balls out. They do as much as they can possibly do. Are, is, that, is there a ceiling on this of what you can do? Can it look like Las Vegas down there? Or can, we, we'll, can we see it from the moon well, at some point? Fantastic. Um, but again, I, know I don't want to you know, keep saying the same thing over and over again, but there's such good team spirit here. Um, each block is its own community. Um, we organize block captains um, to mobilize the community on each block and to disseminate information. Each of the bars and restaurants on each block has worked together. Um, I'm sure we will see more lights and more uh, pizzazz as we go through the summer. But there's a huge amount of uh, respect amongst business owners. I think everyone appreciates that it's in each other's mutual interests to maintain positive relationships. Um, and, you know, I'm standing in ratio right now. Um, a little bit later, I might want to go to Odell to enjoy some nutty shilling and then top the night off with some delicious whiskey from uh, Block. So, and beat you from there as well. So, you know, very much, again, spirit, no real controversial statements to make right now. Uh, hopefully that won't change as we move through the summer. But, um, yeah, great example of um, teamwork down here. All right, just make sure you encourage all businesses to make it more than just a concrete barrier. Absolutely. Um, yeah, no, no concrete barriers in sight right now. Um, tents, uh, synthetic grass, uh, very, very comfortable furnishings, um, you know, barriers and designations around each patio as required by the city to ensure controlled entry and exit um, and sufficient social distancing. So, um, yeah, so far, so good. Looking forward to the weekend. Cool. Hey, can you convince some one of these businesses to maybe bring some sand in from Bora Bora, lay that down for me, and and create some beach seating, which would be cool. And then running water would be a nice theme for me if I could have that to <laughs> just soothe me a little bit. I don't know if you can make that happen, but it'd be great. I'm gonna stay that sort of environment, but we'll see what we can do. Thanks, brother. John Deffenbaugh, uh, thanks for putting up with us, man. Good luck to you guys down there. I'd wish you luck, but I know it'll be success. Uh, just a lot of great folks right there behind Rhino and Rhino Art District. Thanks again, brother. Thank you. Thank you, John. There. That was a good one, man. Um, I, does it, do you have a lot of questions about this whole thing? I mean, I, I see I those do, patios. I do, but more, I'm more interested in asking Jay how that we had a – Oh, I know. Trust we me, had it's a stress. It was fire inspection. That oh, was just... I, I mean, I mean, good. You know, did he seem mad? No, no, he was a cool dude, man. Um, here's the thing, and, and where my you know frustration we... comes with is that uh, I'm calling. To, you saw me yesterday. I was on the phone for almost two hours with the building inspection, and then it just hung up on me. And I'm just trying to schedule them. So I know when they're going to yeah. be here, so that I can get all the ducks in a yeah. row. Not to say that we're in here throwing he fireworks seemed like everywhere. A very, very, um, first of all, smart and generous person, and and knows what he's doing and no, what he's looking for. I mean, when, and literally, we don't have much going on around here. It's our studio kitchen. No. But when they um, get here, they're great. It's yeah. like my frustration lies with just I just call and leave a voicemail because you can't talk to anybody. I mean, let's you know, let's face it. Yeah. And then I don't get a scheduled thing. They just pop in. Yeah. You want me tell you why no for the exact reason why? yeah because yeah. they, 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 they want to catch it. if you're doing something yeah. bad man well, they don't want to schedule time because well, they listen i i get that but I, How this do, falls up this did we pass? yeah well no we didn't pass <laughs> but here's the thing it's because <laughs> it's because of these i didn't know that these were outdated and and again will he come back or all we that... have to do is send him a picture all we have to do get these serviced yeah. and send the picture the into the email he's going to send me yeah. and they'll pass us they don't have to come yeah, back well, out and what a racket that is for the hood every six months someone's got to come out 
and take well, you know three hundred bucks out Grease of your fires, pocket. Man, that's where they start. Right well, we're clean people, people. who have I mean, dirty listen, hoods. Uh, and tr- truly, as as I know that that wasn't great to come in with the live show and everything, and we failed, and so seemingly that's, that's <laughs> but it wasn't that, a that's fail. Terrible. Man, it was just one day. But it's but it's uh, actually uh, not because as soon as I, we all we have to do is get it service, send them a picture, we're passed, and then there's the oh, building one. Right. But the building one is going to be the same thing. Apparently, is that it's they're so just going to funny pop that in. we've been doing this since we've got into this location right i don't know two years ago and um, we're coming up on renewing a lease <laughs> before we get can there. get your final <laughs> isn't that crazy i got yeah, i've got that uh, so is life where did you want that uh, i'm gonna put a poll up that gray wolf thing pull? I, well i got the gray wolf thing oh, are you really? doing a gray wolf thing yeah or? i am and and uh we'll, we'll, dude, can we re- remind me toward the, towards the end of the show um going away for for birthday weekend and, and cool, kind of. We've never had weekends. It's an odd thing to say. Isn't it? Uh, going away for birthday weekend, I thought, where, what better place? Gray Wolf Resort. It really is a lovely location, and we want to show you a little bit of where I'll be going this weekend. And we've got uh, another guest that we haven't seen in quite some time. I'm actually really looking forward to catching up with Larry Hers, who's coming up next right here, the Modern Eater Show yeah. <laughs> yeah, hey guys, Chris Johnson here, owner of Rome Sausage, your hyper-local source for all things sausage awesomeness. My family is proud to carry on the fine traditions of Rome's founder, Jerry Rome, by producing a variety of amazing sausage in small batches with an eye on quality, not quantity. Every batch is made here in the great state of Colorado by hand-mixing spices, utilizing lean cuts of pork to make an outstanding product. Sourcing ingredients and materials locally, we are committed to supporting local vendors, chefs, restaurants, and the entire Colorado food scene. Getting hungry yet? Brats, Italian, breakfast, hot Polish, green chili, chicken apple, and the world's best chorizo. You can source all of our sausage through a variety of food service distributors. If your distributor doesn't carry it, call us. We'll come direct. You want a custom item? We'll do that too. Samples, and of course, sausage jokes, can be had by contacting me directly at chris at romesausage.com or by phone at 303-296-7663. The modern eater loves Rome sausage, and I know you will too. <laughs> hey, Zach Kreider here, Colorado Mills Sunflower Products out of Lamar, Colorado, your only local source grown from a local crop to produce a local oil for local chefs. You can find it at Shamrock Foods, What Chefs Want, Seattle Fish Company. Uh, let me try it one more time, then we'll see. Hey, restaurants, we're glad you're reopening from Colorado Mills Sunflower Oil. We'll see you soon. (laughs) First, we partner with the best farmers in the world, and then we tell them, we will take it all. Process whole spices daily, blend custom spices to order, keep it fresh, safe, and flavorful, all so that you can get back to doing what you do best. So whether you're a restaurant, a food manufacturer, or an at-home cook, be sure to visit The Spice Guy at www.thespiceguyco.com. Yeah, we're actually on time, which is amazing. It's 3 o'clock in the Mile High City. It's a Friday, July 10th. Friday. <laughs> Friday. Standing by for Larry Hers from OCN Eats and OCN Drinks. Uh, but Jeff Rourke at A-Plus Beverage Solutions, I'm telling you, people took, a, took him up on the request, and now they're pouring delicious uh, beer the way it was intended to taste. Jeff Rourke, he's the man when it comes to installing custom draft systems. He can go as little as one to as many as you need. He'll make your dreams come true, just like he did for many, many places. Beast and Brews, their 100-tap system, tap 14. The list goes on and on. Monarch, have you ever heard of Monarch Casino? I have. What's it called? Monarch. Monarch. <laughs> I just want to hear. Him you want to? Did that brighten your day up, Jay? I Monarch. Mean, a tiny casino. bit. Casino. Just a yeah. tiny. I'll tell Monarch. you though. A plus. What they did at Beast and Bruzo. That's a tough system that is because a tough system. people are pouring their own beers. And if any Yahoo can walk up and pour their own beer, you got to have a. Damn good system from A+. He'll put a damn good system in there for you. He'll also clean your existing tap lines, which you definitely need to do. Because if you're pouring in efficient beer, boys, what are you doing? You're pouring, you're pouring your, your money, money down, down the, the drain. drain. Do not pour your money down the drain. Get a hold of Jeff Rourke and A-plus Beverage Solutions. It's just a phone call away. 720-272-3809. I got my pen one more time. 720-272-3809. It's Jeff Rourke, A-plus Beverage Solutions. Uh, if you missed any of the show today, you missed Chef Dana Rodriguez at 2 p.m. 
She is one of our summer dinner series chefs. Her dinner is on August 4th, and she'll do a great job at the spacious, well-appointed Pizza Republica downtown. I'd get your tickets now. I'll ask you where, Brian? I would just go right online to www.summerdinnerseries.com. Where would you go, Jay? Summerdinnerseries.com. Where would you go, Larry Hers? What? Huh? <laughs> Summerseries.com. <laughs> Summerdinnerseries.com. 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 Come on, Larry. Come on, Larry. How are you? Good to see your face. You're in Paris. Paris. On me. <laughs> Good to see you, man. Larry Hers, OCN Eats, OCN Drinks. Folks are going, what? We haven't seen Larry in a while. Did he, is he ch- no. What is OCN Eats? What is OCN Drinks, Larry? Well, start at the beginning. I was born very young. Yes, you were. In New York. On a turnip truck. Uh, restaurant business, 29 years. Owned six different restaurants. Now I help restaurants. I'm a restaurant promoter. So I have many different assets, a lot of different shows, um, a lot of different clients. But basically what we do here is we use your assets on whether it be emailing, texting, Facebook, and Instagram, do it for you on a regular basis because generally restaurants don't. And then we also have our own assets here, uh, meaning one of them being OCN Eats and OCN Drinks on Instagram and Facebook. And then we also have the largest social media reach in Colorado with over 800,000 followers across 20 pages on Facebook. Denver now our largest at 230,000 followers. But wait, there's more. We also have a website. If you've never been to ourcommunitynow.com, it is worth checking out. So we write articles about what's going on in Colorado. And before COVID, we were pretty proud of how we were doing. We were averaging a million page views a month, which isn't shabby, right? March, April, May, we were a million five, which is pretty impressive. In uh, June, 2.9 million page views Ooh. to our website, our community now. Cranking. So, uh, your cars get to use that as We write articles about you and put on that website. We post you on those now pages, like now, 230,000 followers. So you get to leverage our assets to help grow your business and butts and needs. That's basically what we do. And why don't you, the shows. Why don't you spring for some better internet over there so that you can stay connected? <laughs> you, think it's, you think it's me. You don't think it's you. Man, I'm sitting away 10 feet from a fiber optics, 100 up and 100 down, bro. <laughs> <laughs> what am I? I don't know. I'm just busting you up. Larry, we have what is What is Well, I, have you, I think you guys have sort of seen the new show. I see the link for that. Yeah, the, it's, it's really weird. Local, local businesses, food and beverage, and um, never, the concept's really cool. I like that. Local biz buzz. Okay with it. You're all right with it? <laughs> I mean, what am I to do? What can I do? I don't own the, the, the space. You know, it's my mind's free. It's not. An, it's not your space. Yeah, I don't. I don't Is it? Space. No, it's not. We've just done it for a long time. It's going to be good. We're going to be one of your biggest contributors. I Absolutely, think. that'll be awesome. It'll be an awesome part. Local way to partner more. biz buzz. I love the logo. Do you mind if we play a little bit of it? I wish you would. All right, here it comes. This is local biz buzz. Oh, shut up. Oh, oh! You set want to set up. it up? Set, it, set up. it up. I pushed play, but it didn't. You usually, want me to set it up. Set it up. All right. So nine o'clock every morning, live on those eight hundred thousand follower pages, those twenty pages across Colorado. Anybody who has anything to do with food or beverage injury, whether it be a knife company, I've had donuts, lots of donuts, ice cream companies, uh, big, small, doesn't matter. You can be making it out of your house. You're looking for some free publicity. Uh, DM me through OCN Eats Instagram or Facebook message me through OCN Eats Facebook, and I'll get on the schedule. We do have Rome sausages coming in next week. Nice. That's your going to finally get to try his sausages, and um, I give you five-ish minutes uh, to talk about whatever you want, promote your wares. And today was a cool episode, and that's what I think I sent you. 
range call to DU who started this company today. They started in real foods in Colorado. You know what, Larry? I do want you to move your computer wherever you are to a different location just because we're going to be spending probably the next 10 minutes with you. And I want it to sound fantastic. It's it's intermittent. It's coming in and out. Yeah. Is there a way that you can move? Just, I, maybe it's just five feet to the right. I don't know. But um, we, we didn't hear the name of the coffee company, Larry. What was what was that name? New Range. New, New Range. Range. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Just want uh, – okay, good. Oh, Perfect. I got another green screen. <laughs> I just snorted laughing. All right. <laughs> Thank um, you for doing that. I'm going to play this, Larry, while you jump to your next green screen. And uh, <laughs> this is Local Biz Buzz. Good morning, Colorado. Welcome to a Friday edition of Local Biz Buzz. I'm your host, Larry Hers. This is a show where I give local food and beverage companies five to ten minutes to tell us about their products, tell you about their products. Today in studio, we have New Range Coffee from Denver, Colorado. Denver, Colorado. Uh, and we have Zach and Colin here. Give us a little history of New Range. All right. Well, uh, so we were kind of talking about this earlier, but we actually have a very interesting origin story. So Colin and I are two college friends. Um, we both met at the University of Denver, and we haven't left since. So amongst our friends, there was kind of an inside joke that we all love espresso martinis. What we do is we rate them on Instagram. Colin actually created an account where he What's the name of the account? Uh, at espresso.martinis. Okay. Give it a follow. <laughs> Sorry. It's yeah, good, why it's not? good content. And then, uh, so we pretty much go to every restaurant and bar in the uh, greater Denver area, and we rate it out of 10. And this kind of grew over time, where we were receiving submissions from as far as London, Tokyo, um, any other cool cities? Basically, one from every continent. Yeah, every right. continent except for Antarctica. And we always <laughs> joked that if we ever had the opportunity to leave and create the gold standard for the espresso martini, we would. So about a year and a half ago, we both had the opportunity to leave our corporate jobs, and we set out to create the perfect espresso martini. All right, hang on. Let's press pause right there. First of all, I love a great espresso martini. Do I you? actually have never, never had, had one. one in my life. You never, oh, come on, Larry. Of course you have. You haven't? No, you know I've never had coffee. Why would I... And if you fast forward to the end of to the end of the episode, I had to bring in somebody to try that coffee. You didn't do it. No. <laughs> you, oh ah, that's like slapping them in their face, Larry. Unless you have when some I kind arranged, of when I arranged it with them, I told them I would not be drinking it. Let, let me ask As you a question. Matter, Larry, what a bummer that you just, are. That just po- popped into my head is is why yeah. haven't you ever concerned uh, consumed coffee? I mean, what? What it, if you have never had it? You don't know that, that you don't like it technically, right? I mean, you may not like the smell, but how have you never just tried it? Because mm. I don't like the smell. That's good, man. And I don't like hot drinks. Cold coffee. And you don't like hot drinks. And that espresso martina could have been a a, a very nice segue for you into coffee. Yeah. All right. Yeah, so I have to watch that for sure. So what this reminds me. First of all, I love it. it it's great, Larry. Um, reminds me of like Shark Tank. Oh, he's you, got the pitch going. He's, you, you know how they're kind of coming in there and explaining their story and that kind. Of, and Larry's interviewing them and and it, it, beating it, them up a little it's bit. It's just got that real feel. <laughs> so if I forward to the end here, I want to see this where someone comes in to drink it. Yeah, I bring in uh, David, my this coffee is expert. So funny! What is wrong with you, Larry? Hey guys, uh, you won't like to see you. You don't have enough time on the show. And, and in case you didn't know. Yeah. I've never tried coffee, so that's why I'm bringing them in here. Awesome. awesome. That's actually right, very let's entertaining. Start, let's start right. the regular one. Super excited. Um, drink a lot of coffee and also a big believer in CBD. I like so to, let's, I guess this is your regular. So is there vodka in there? One like this start. serial killer, no okay. explanation. You know, I've never Enjoy tried coffee. And then he just steps away. <laughs> you know, and it's like, oh, that guy kills people. Hey, Larry, what's the, uh, what's the... Uh, you want me to tell you more about their product? Well, actually, I, w- I so want it one. It starts like coffee. It's in a can? Yeah, look. Yeah, they brought us a bunch. Oh, did they? Uh, so they, the original concept was it was going to have uh, alcohol in it, but they had trouble, you know, figuring out how to get that done. So they just made a regular one, and then they have one with uh, CBD, and then uh, they're making a, a latte one is coming out any day now. And then eventually, I think they'll try and do the liquor one. But they got so, into Whole Foods. Oh, they did. I David, was David said it was good. I, it was supposedly not bitter. I, I don't know. 
There's a lot. I mean, it's coffee is is what it is. It's not, cold, cold brew. Yeah, and somehow so, they have they have this. They called it like non jittery patented formula. I don't. It I, has as much caffeine as two Red Bulls. Well, that people do it for the jitters, you know. I think I, I would be. I guarantee I would be if I drank well, that much caffeine, man. I would be bouncing off of these walls. Do you know how much a can retails for, Larry? Because I'm actually pretty familiar with this space. I did not ask that question. I'd, I'd be interested to know because usually those go for about four bucks a pop. I don't know. Do you know how many? <laughs> do you know how many ounces are in there, Larry? <laughs> you jokester! How many ounces are in there? Uh, eight ounces. That's an eight ounce. So that's a large one. How many yeah. calories? Fifteen calories. How much sugar? No, sugar. We're not. I mean, not if it's fifteen, no sugar. Yeah, that's a dark one. Is there another one like a latte you were talking about? Yeah, that one's not out yet. Oh, it's not out yet. Well, that's an interesting product. I can tell you right now, I would forbid them to go forward with it. It's a tough space, and they're going to get crushed like cockroaches. Ah, already in Whole Foods. I say that's pretty good. Pretty good going. Well, a year into it, I was just trying to sound. Oh, like, they're a year into it. You were trying to sound like Kevin, Mister Wonderful. Yeah, Mister Wonderful, yeah, which, which didn't work. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't get it. Hey, dude. Um, uh, restaurants. So that's one show. Anybody could come on. Anybody free, and then. But uh, the, the crown jewel, uh, I think, is restaurants near me. And I sent you uh, Greenwood Village. Do you yeah, have that? I do. Up? And I want to talk about this a little bit, man, because, again, when, when I watch these, I'm so super jealous of your production team. Man, we can't even pull a Carrie Baird liner out of our production. No, they're out. Oh, they're out? Yeah, they're out. Oh, cool. Good job, Jay. Thanks. Good job. No, the production-wise, when you start this thing out, is there, is there a drone involved in this? Last episode, we always finish with the drone shot, yeah. Who, but that opening shot you're talking about that wasn't a drone, that's a guy walking. That's a guy walking, okay. Okay, it's amazing how smooth he was, right? I just want to let you know that if you would like to uh bring on a master drone pilot, I know a guy, just letting you know that. All right, I'm pretty good. So, at restaurants near me, we film every one, it comes out every Tuesday night, <laughs> and um. Oh. Uh, this week, we're, uh, they were heading to Golden. Uh, this episode that came out this week is Greenwood Village. Next week, coming is Longmont and Wash Park. When are you going to uh, do Cherry Lone Creek? Tree. When are you going to do Cherry Creek? We will do Cherry Creek. We'll do, yes. Uh, and that one, could do, you'll come and hang out with us? Well, I want, I want you to promise me that I'm allowed to come with you on that one. And, and, You're allowed to come on any episode. And I have input on which restaurants in Cherry Creek. Okay, you can tell me now, or does it have to be like private? No, I'll tell you absolutely right now who they are. Um, so one that's really... Remember, they have to be local. Yeah, yeah. One that's very local. near and dear to me. They, they can't be ch- any kind of ch- – so just so we're on the same page of the, the playing field here, Cherry Creek Grill is not local, and it's a chain, right? No. Oh, okay, let's hear what Larry yeah, has I, to say. I would, not, I would not film them, A, because they probably wouldn't let me. B, they don't help. Okay, so Cherry Cricket would be one we could go to, obviously. I think that's a good choice. Yes, okay, very good choice. And, and then uh, Grind we Kitchen, and, Grind Kitchen and Watering Hole. I'd like to go by. That would be cool if we could. You're not thrilled on that one? No, no. I just uh, just similar to the cricket. So I want you know no. you need five different ethnicities. Really. Oh, is that or what styles? You, is that what you're trying Ooh, to do? Oh, huh? Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So what? So there's a new spot in the departure. What's the name of that? We just got an email for it, Jay. Do you know what the name of that place is called? It's called like the. Well, uh, oh, with that chef. Yeah. What I, that I said. It's like the lounge. Mm, or my, is Cochina oh, uh, Calore still around? Yeah, is that a good? Uh, or, or Marco? Yeah, we need one Italian. Family. What would you pick for the? Italian? Well, that's what I was going to ask. Is quality Italian? Is that is that a chain? I'm not sure. It's quality Italian. It is. But, is that- I wouldn't disqualify them, but but I'd rather have a local ownership like a Cucciolore or Piatti local, local or Jones. Barolo. The local Jones. That's local what's Jones. going into departure. I'm interested in learning more. Uh, you know, next week, uh, Toro's opening. Jeff Richardson in the uh, it, GW Marriott. Yeah, which is interesting because I want to see how that shakes free because I liked that space when it was second home. 
yeah. with the fire pit yeah. out there, and you got to see all yeah. the cougars and the old guy. But, but hasn't that place turned over a few times? It I don't know. Like it a, didn't, it's did, not a good spot. What's it been? It's just been dormant since Second Home, hasn't it? Hotel restaurants are tough, bottom line. Yeah. But that was kind of a that was Cherry a hangout. They, yeah, that was a place. Yeah, so Milwaukee Street, that's more like a bar, right? Their food's not remarkable by any means. I mean, they have some. And then you got to remember, we want it to be visually appealing, yeah. you know, for the so, camera. So Piotti, you're going to go to, I would assume. Piotti. Well, well, tell do, me what it's. Who do you pick your best? Well, Piotti. Though is it over Kachina Calore? No, I mean maybe not. Yeah, maybe not. I mean, I and then not to diss. I mean, he's a, he's a great guy. Marco, I think is that chef there. He's been there. He's you know started it. He's been you'd there have for to put years. Elways in there too, wouldn't you? Yeah, you would. Steakhouse Elways. You'd have would to you put. It. I would like. I would pick Barolo first choice. Yeah, for yeah. Italian, right? And then, and but then, they're only night. That's a tough one. You'd have to go to Little Ollie's too, right? I was just thinking about that for Asian. That's, and... that's, a, that's a decent choice. I mean, I like that. Um, oh, what's the tiny approach? Um, well, Hapa and, is a, but it's sushi only. You know, that's a local. Yeah, we filmed Hapa for Greenwood Village, so I'm not going to do Hapa again. And true, uh, true food wouldn't qualify. Would no, it? not at all. Fortune, yeah. Fortune walks the table. You been there? Mm-mm. No, and what's that new, the new oh, the new French restaurant? It's like La. They'll be okay. Yeah, that's a great choice. It is now is that a local? I'm not familiar with the the ownership of that. Uh, yeah, it's out of New York, uh, but I have a. It's gorgeous, and I have a great relationship with them. So, so they're coming on. Bend the rules for Larry. Uh, <laughs> you can bend the rules for Larry, and, and they so, have a local owner. Fl- yeah, flower, awesome. flower child would not no, be local, no, not local, right? At yeah, all. I wouldn't want to do yeah. That. So I think there's there's a few great ones there. Hey, but this one though, and and it's not well, Matsuhisa. I love Matsuhisa. But what across the street? You just reminded me of Zadie's. Oh, Zadie. you know, that's, that's like a landmark. That's a landmark, a deli that's been there. Zadie's. Jason's coming on uh, in about two weeks. That's one of my favorites. And, and in, um, in all seriousness about Larry Hers and what he does as a restaurant promoter with the restaurants that he does work with, I can tell you right now, if you're, if you're thinking or contemplating at all working with Larry and you're just wondering the effectiveness of it, it's very effective. And, and Larry does a great job, puts his heart and soul into it. Um, so, yeah, if you ever wonder, hey. Will you show a little of the clip of restaurants near me? Yeah, you want to set it up? Yeah, so every week I said we go – in one afternoon, I eat at five restaurants in about four or five hours. Uh, obviously, I don't eat at all, but um, it, um, you know, I try and pick five different ones, a little variety, and it's free to the restaurants, 100% free. All it costs them is the, is the food, and uh, we're, you know, we're trying to show you the different neighborhoods around Colorado. Sweet. Here it is. Restaurants near me, Greenwood Village style. On this week's episode of Restaurants Near Me, we're in Greenwood Village, starting off the landmark. Greenwood Village is a little sleepy suburb just near the DTC, south of the Denver metro area. You wouldn't believe the amount of restaurants we have here. The choices are endless. I'm going to take you to some of the best in all of Greenwood Village. Let's eat. First of all, they make you look so good, Larry. Like a human. That shot is so hot. <laughs> a human being. It was my idea, though. I, I just, they do, ah, it's good. All right, restaurants near me. Yeah, look, at, look them up on YouTube. They're all there for you for uh, consumption. This is season one, episode make eight. Make sure you get to, uh, if you have to fast forward, make sure you get to Los Chingones part. No, I'm not uh, fast forwarding it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ride this one for a minute if you don't mind, Larry. Here we are in Pizza Republic at the Landmark. Because of the coronavirus, they've had to expand their patio onto the street, but it really works. It, it's so comfortable out here. The music's going, you got, you got people out here, you got flowers. They've done a great job adapting. They do traditional Italian food, pizzas, pastas, and now they're doing something completely different. Wednesdays and Fridays, they're doing Panino Repubblica with these gorgeous Italy-inspired paninos. This is the Cotto with prosciutto Cotto inside of it. And this is your Caprese, basic Caprese, tomato, mozzarella, basil. They're some of the best sandwiches I've had in all of Colorado. So these paninos, they make the bread fresh every day. Really simple, thin, kind of like a focaccia. Just drizzles a little olive oil and sea salt on top of it. This caprese is just everything you'd think it'd be. Just fresh, basil, pesto. God. 
Yeah, don't cut a piece off, Larry. That's a 10. Wash it down with the Frosé. He's got these, this is new for the summer. Frozen wine slushies. Life is good. Next, we're gonna head over just across the street to Hapa Sushi. Hapa Sushi, four locations. Some Look of my favorite sushi in all of town. Let's go for a walk. Hapa is a, a fusion of Hawaiian and Asian food. They're famous for their rolls. They do very provocative name rolls. They got the foreplay roll, the 69 roll, the orgasm roll, the multiple orgasm roll. Hapa is also known for amazing cocktails like the Soju Blossom. Soju is a Japanese liqueur, most popular liquor in the whole world. It sells more than anything, more than vodka, anything. Less alcohol. Wait a minute. <laughs> okay, is that true? Do I need to fact check that? The only, the only slight mess up is it's actually Korean liquor. But yes, it's the most popular liquor in the world. It, it, yeah. That's like saying that... Well, but that's like the cheap, the cheap Chinese liquor that that like it's like the it's like soccer is the biggest sport in the world, right? Or but yeah, not, goat's but, the most but, eaten animal, right? In the but world. not yeah. here because Americans seem to forget that there's other continents around us, you know, that do, that, that have, have, that have a lot people. more people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, We're the now are you drinking you alcohol? I didn't think you drank alcohol. <laughs> oh, Did he I drinks see you alcohol. alcohol. He sure does. He likes vodka. Vodka's his oh, deal. Yeah, but there's oh, one alcohol right. that he vodka. hasn't drank, though, no. right, Larry? What is it? There's vodka one. with an orange slice. That's what you like, baby. All right, let's continue. All in vodka. Oh, my God, that was so good. <laughs> Thank you so much. Look how beautiful this is. Kobe Thinly sliced, a little soy sauce, some jalapenos. If you've never had carpaccio before, give it a whirl. It's shockingly good. Oh. Got two of my favorite rolls here. We got the triple X here, wrapped in hamachi. Then we have the firecracker roll. That's a good wrapped one. Wrapped in tuna. I, like I that. love that. Not really sushi at all. Put a little all, fresh but... fish right on top of your sushi. That's to die for. Look at that. You want to eat that. When I heard. Now, why do they do the sweet old shot of you rolling up on places, you know? Just you strutting up on a plate. That's a great shot as you're rolling in. They, they kind of have a shot list, don't they? Of like, this is exactly what we want to get. How much is filmed, Larry, versus what's left cut on the floor? Uh, I don't really know what they do for editing, but a lot. I mean, I always do at least two takes of anything you do for safety. Um just yeah, I probably hours in this thing up at six minutes. Ah, got it. All right, let me continue on. Make sure you get a little cheaper. restaurant was opening Video's Bellevue a Station, fresh. a Michelin star chef. I had to go check it out. The French is brought to you by two sisters, originally from Senegal, and then brought their skills here to America, making classic French dishes. We you base classic French dish. It's like the Italian version of Chipino. You got your mussels, shrimp, got some fish in there. The broth has got some sap on it. You can taste the love in this dish. These girls really know what they're doing. Steak and eggs here, they brought me off the brunch menu on this crostini. And the egg was cooked perfectly. See how it's dripping. You mix that egg in with the steak, a little bit of this crostini. The French really know how to eat. I would love to have that for brunch. I'd love to have that every day. Start doing bar seating there, huh? Uh, you can use the counter, yeah. Oh, cool. And you want me to go to <laughs> – it's just up next. I'll just continue to play. We'll, yeah. play. we'll play this whole thing. Here we go. We're at stop four today. Los Chingones means badass <laughs> To show what a badass <laughs> I am, apparently. I'm about to have four shots of tequila. Let's drink. Yes. Now, this looks like a good meal. Uh, brought me some cocktails. Hang on, Larry. Did you, you did you drink? Come on. No. You Come didn't. on. You did. You didn't. Come on. Okay. All right. As you can tell, cocktails here: prickly pear, smoked margarita, tang, and tequila. Literally tang, like the stuff you drank as a kid. That is shockingly good. So refreshing. Oh, I would drink these by the pool all day long. This is the way nachos should be. Like, there's no skimping here. There's gonna be plenty of meat and cheese and jalapenos for every chip. 
Those are the best nachos I've ever had. <laughs> that cheese enchilada is phenomenal. The sauce. Oh. oh my god. Last stop on restaurants near me, Greenwood Ice Village. Cake. We're at the new Spice Trade Brewing. Oh. We're here with the owner, Jeff. Jeff was telling me about his beer and his food. But Jeff, tell us the concept of Spice Trade Brewing. Yeah, so Spice Trade, I always tell people that we brew beer inspired by culinary ingredients from around the world to really showcase cultures through their flavors. And what we're really trying to do here is, is, is pair our culinary inspired beer with street food from around the world. The beer you're drinking now is our Scarlet Giant. It has um, a yeast that's indigenous to the Denver Botanic Gardens in it. Uh, we paired it with the um, watermelon, tomato, ahi, tuna salad. You know, it, I, whenever something really works, I'm like, it's like peanut butter and jelly. Yeah. They go together. You would never think, how is beer and tuna poke and watermelon gonna go together? Yeah. But, but everything you put in it made it work. And then what do we got here? And so on the other side, we have our buttered chicken arancini. Um, and that we paired that with our jalapeno pilsner. So it's a classic German pilsner. It's gonna have a little bit of a bitter bite from the, the Tetanang hops in there, but a little spice from the, from the jalapeno peppers. We use fresh jalapeno peppers. <laughs> Holy cow. I've never had a dish like that before. I mean, you've gotta come check this place out. Jeff, thank you so much. Just wrapped up filming a spectacular day here in Greenwood Village. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hit the bell to turn on notifications. We'll see you soon for another episode of Restaurants Near Me. Let's eat. Well, I, you know, I laughed. I cried. That Give it up to you, Larry. That's a yeah. great, great little Good spot. content. Good, Good spot. content for sure. Thank you. Thanks, brother. Uh, yeah. It's awesome. You're on to something. That's, uh, what's the best place to direct people to see? I just say YouTube and, and uh, yeah. search, search for restaurants near me. Yeah. Best way, best way uh, to do that. Yeah, see, OCN is the name of the channel. Stands for our community now, OCN Videos. Uh, we've got tons of other videos on there. We have all different kinds of shows on there. Um, everybody who works here is encouraged to do a podcast. So there's one about gaming, if you're into that. There's one of uh, these uh, do movie reviews. Uh, tons, of, tons of content. And content is king, as you know. I'm um, looking at the uh, stream here. Thank you, everybody, for George Eater's watching the stream here today. Hey, buddy. And wanted to actually peek in with George Eater as we bring me that coffee, Larry. Pizza Republic of Downtown says, hey, so we've been doing something called the Summer Dinner Series, and we've got seven more dinners left, Larry. I asked you, I said, Larry, we'd love for you to be our guest at one of these Summer Dinner Series. Have you figured out which one you'd like to come join us at, Larry? Yet, have you asked the wife? I have not. I, 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 you told me to ask my bosses, and I, I sent it to them, and they said they were, they wanted to go, but I don't know. They haven't picked a date. Um, I, I would think I'm going to go to George's. That probably be the one I go to. Yeah, cool. George Eater. He's on the 18th of August. He's going to knock it out of the park. Uh, here they are. The lineup that's left. We've got uh, coming up next, July 21st. It's Carly Smith and Jim Pittenger. Uh, biker Jim Pittenger and the Fairy Gut Mother get together for a delicious gut-friendly dinner. And don't let it fool you. You'll be, you'll have a lot of food. It'll yeah. be delicious. Uh, just gut health is the name of that game. The 28th is Jesusia Silva. The 4th of August is Chef Dana Rodriguez. The 11th of August is Chef Brother Luck. Then there's uh, Chef George Eater on August 18th. And Chef Justin Brunson on August 25th. Guys, I had a thought about this Justin Brunson dinner. Tell me where you can eat Justin Brunson's food. Only at one place. One place in town. And you, it's not cooked. You know where that is, right? Yeah, River Bear. But, well, Le local, local Vore Levers, his, his butcher shop. In or, there. or Levers Local Vore. The Levers Local Vore. Uh, but but <laughs> honestly, you know. Oh, yeah, but, you know, how much does that represent cuisine? No, doesn't. doesn't. Yeah, you can't get it. Well, but I would say, though, you forgot one. What? September 1st. Just added. Oh, just added. Or just or added. circle back Hot around. off the presses. Yeah, that's right. September 1st, Chef Troy Gard will close down the Summer Dinner Series. Had to sneak out of town this next week, so we just pushed that one to the back end of it. But tickets are almost sold out for that dinner and many, many others, so I'd go get those. Also, uh, while we have you here, I'm going to ask you uh, anything that you want to update us on. But at the same time, we were talking about patio extensions, and I was saying there's hits and misses out there. Larry, are you are you seeing some things that are working and things that are not working out there as far as patio extensions? 
haven't heard of any that aren't working. Who's not working? Well, again, I was just driving down Second Hour uh, Avenue in Cherry Creek, and I've seen this a few times. You remember when we were driving down? I forget where, where it was, but we could tell that it was coming down to one lane, and they yeah. and they had the so basically there are some very predominant major streets. What street was, was that, that? Was it South Broadway? Were no, we driving we, I down think we were South in Broadway? a different town too, or up north. Yeah, it was up north. It was in um, Longmont area. Oh yes, yes, yes. It was near uh, Greeley, or was it? And Greeley they were putting Longmont? down yeah. those Longmont concrete, downtown Longmont yeah, concrete yep. barriers down, and it's it's a major street. So basically, they're just putting concrete barriers where you would park to make that seating. But I don't want to eat in the street, especially if you don't do anything fun to it. And then you think of the cars that go by and the exhaust that you're eating, right? And you, some places just seem like, man, that, that might not be too good of an idea to represent your business that way. And then I think, Greg, quit being an ass. They're just trying to do what they can. To well, get there should more be a seating. little bit of both, man. You, listen, you, if you're going to do it, you got to do it right. I if, think so. You know, and, and don't do anything half ass in life, I always say. Yeah. Um, so I was wanting to see. Square killed it. And I think George is killing it. I do, too. George has got a good setup. Although I did recommend to George to put sand outside there and make it a beach <laughs> environment and see if he could put some palm trees. I can't wait to see his, his, his movie night. Any, uh, here's one for you guys closing. CB and Potts. Remember CB and Potts? Oh, gosh, yeah. Done. That, that's one down in Highlands Ranch. That's by you, Larry, isn't it? The, well, the one uh, in DTC has been gone. A year or two. So now the one uh, you're saying that Highlands Ranch has gone to? Or yeah, just all, all of them? All of them, and then, and then the, fi- the final one sold. Uh, Jonathan Shikes wrote about it today in Westward, if you want the particulars. But CB and That Pops, whole segment is disappearing. Decimated. I wanted to circle back around to you because you were on kind of a camera remote for us one day at a place that was going to open up near... Uh, little man that was kind of an outdoor place. Did they ever open? You remember, what place? Oh, place? Killing it. Happy Camper. Yeah, they're killing it? Killing it. Yeah, because they have a, that big patio. And in theory, you could socially distance there. But it's kind of a meat market, pick up scene. And, uh, people are having fun there. Oh, doesn't sound terrible. Uh, <laughs> any other closings or openings you want to talk about? Um, you got um, Slater's Fifty Fifty. I'm sure you guys know all about that because of Rebecca, right? Uh, Mr. Slater himself has reached out and wants to come on for what's for lunch. He's here for two days, the 20th and 21st, and of course I'm already booked. So I'm gonna a second what's for lunch that day just to accommodate him and meet him and and taste what a Fifty Fifty burger tastes like. It's not a bad idea. To start doing two what's for lunches. Right, you'll have to be. Right. Two, you'll have to be two what's for my treadmill as well, there, Larry. He he <laughs> diets one month out of the year, and I think he. Re- Larry lives a really interesting life, a really interesting life. Larry Hers, what else, man? We only get you for once a week now. You told us. Hopefully, we can get you more. But uh, Fridays, you'll be joining us, and uh, just want to get it all in. Anything else? Oh, he said I had fifteen minutes, so I didn't really prepare a lot. <laughs> Well, shoot, man. You take as much time as you want. I get in the whole hour? Well, you take as much time as you want, but I just want to make sure that you got it in. Are you good? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I miss you guys. I love being with you guys. Well, um, when, when's uh, the next um, restaurants near me going to be shot? So, yeah, every Wednesday. We, we're lining up the list. Uh, Wednesday will be in Golden. We've got – all right, name. can you name Ivan Golden? Ooh, in I can. Golden. You got you Daniel can. Ashers. You got that one. D- D- wait, okay. He's got that new place. That's Daniel and Josh there. Diner did that. Uh, did that sort of pickup place? Did it ever? Did it open back up? I'm not even sure what you're talking about. Yeah, in Golden, Josh Diner from uh, what's that? Tributary. The tributary. Yep, tributary. Okay. In it, Golden, is a is a Brucey's uh, Golden. Of, no. Of, no, 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 no. Table Mountain Inn, though, yep. is another one you'd have to do in Golden for sure. Um, gosh, what's that little okay. yellow house? There's that little yellow house restaurant up there. I the, bet I know what you're talking about. Is that the Briarwood Inn? No, it's like the Himalayan. Is or? the Briarwood Inn Golden? Getting warm, getting warm, Brian. 
Yeah, yeah, it's right over by this campus. Starts that, with an S. What? Pardon? Starts with an S. Uh, Shambhalaya? Or <laughs> Shambhala? You just made up a word. Shambhala. Shaboom. Shaboom. Sherpa. Sherpa. Okay, yep, Sherpa. <laughs> I, no, I knew it was like, a, it's like an, in, um, not Indian, but what's that? Himalayan, Himalayan food or something like that. But uh, Nepalese, Nepalese, Nepalese. Thank you. Thank you. Nepalese. Um, there's a pretty there's good. A really famous, you're missing like the, like one of the more famous places there. I'm trying to think. Of what well, it's that old, uh, the, it's a cowboy burger bar. Um, right. Is that the one you're talking about on the. Uh, Shepalembas. No, now, it's. Uh, would it be near in Heritage pizza, Square? Pizza, pizza wings. Yep, I, I know it. Uh, I was there the other day, but I got to tell you, some of the food, you know, do you ever disqualify for anyone with, uh, you know, just so-so food? Well, the thing about this show is, you know, I'm reaching out to them and asking if I could be on there, and they know I'm coming, and they're just bringing me their two best dishes. I don't order. So they know it's for me, and it's their two best dishes, it's always amazing. It really is. I haven't had anything that wasn't like, wow. Now, on What's for Lunch, you know, I've done now 61 episodes, which is crazy. Um, not everything's been great. <laughs> That's why I don't eat it on camera also, actually. I don't eat on that show. Oh, really? I have one bite. Then I don't have to react or give a fake. So Because I, I really wouldn't. It's not who I am. I'm not fake. That's so, so funny. Somebody puts the effort in and comes on the show. I'd hate to like make a nasty face when I eat their food. So, are you saying oh, Bob's six. Atomic was that one of yours? Uh, he's on. I've reached out. They have not agreed to be on it yet. He's no. on the list. Larry, this is just, he's cheating. He's googling I restaurants did. in. Well, because there's one that I want to see. I mean, Woody's is. I is, is that would that be where you're going? There's one I wanted to see. That's an oh, old. Please. There's the an Bay old House. bar right downtown. I mean, Okinawa sushi, I'll tell you, I've been there. That's pretty good um, f for sushi in there. But there's a, what is that bar right downtown, Larry? It's Buffalo Sh Rose. Jesus. Shambalambos. Buffalo Rose. Is that it? Did I finally get it? Yeah. Well, no. Buffalo Rose is a famous one. For, for sure. I don't know Golden Well. I live in Lone Tree. Hoss and Pepper Corporation? No, Buffalo Rose is one. And, I mean... That's Shambalambos. That would be the Miner Saloon would be another one. There's a few that have been there forever. I, I got to drive to go to Victor, Colorado. I'm leaving. To the, Welcome to the show. modern eater of Denver show, Shambalambo <laughs> Brian Freeman. Summer dinner Type in Shambala Resort and you'll find it in Fort Collins just so you, <laughs> all you three punky Brewsters can back off. It's called Shambalaya. Shambalaya Resort. It was a client of mine back in the day. Larry? I turn 48 yeah. tomorrow. I'm heading out of here for a minute. And uh, uh, Where are you headed? Heading to Victor, Colorado. I don't know what that means. It's um, yeah, the that? Gray Wolf Resort. It's a place that we really enjoy oh. going to. But what you should say, Larry, that he's not telling you is you should say, Hey, Greg, happy birthday. Would you like us to sing that uh, on the air no, for you right now, sweet cheeks? Do not, well, I would think. Do not <laughs> do it, boys. <laughs> Um, so, <laughs> so we uh, will resume back what here. Is what is it near? I have no idea. We'll be back here on Monday. I'm going to take off for the weekend, summerdinnerseries.com. You guys, uh, great show today. Chef Dana Rodriguez, go back and watch that interview. She's always very lively. If I were you, I would get tickets to her dinner immediately. We're doing two tops, four tops. Yep. That's it, two tops, four tops. No six tops, no singles. Larry can't go alone. You have to bring never the wife. Her, never had her food. Hey, I got a question for you. What if I have two sure. four tops? Can I push it together? No. 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 I'm still social distancing, man. I'm allowed. That's okay. Okay. It's two, no. Two it's either two or fours. That's it. I can't push them together. No. No okay. move tables. And you know who I learned that from, man? George Eater. He's a ball buster. He man. lays it down. He does. He <laughs> tell, he, it's like, hey, Larry, I got the, 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 he's like, don't move anything. How's that? Do you want an answer? Don't move anything. No. <laughs> you mind if I change topics? No, go ahead. I was going to close the show, but yeah. Um, I don't know if what's been what you've been talking about because I, I really haven't had time to listen. Um, but what, what what does a restaurant do if they have an outbreak? What are the rules 
And what are they supposed to do? Does anybody know? Well, you're supposed to first identify the person and get them out of there, right? Yeah. Send them out. And then with the staff, you're supposed to report that. But then they're, they're, right? they've been having – I went to a restaurant the other night, and they had us all fill out a card that gave them our, our names and our phone numbers. Wait. And the night that we went, out, went there for dinner. Now, what's no, int- I haven't had to do that at all. Yeah, I had but, to do that the other night. But what's the answer? The He's talking about the restaurant, not the, not the people going to the restaurant. The I know a restaurant who has an employee who tested positive, and they were asking me what to do. And I couldn't find no any resources for this. Well, Did you call Denver says, Health? That's, that's what you're supposed to do. No, that's a Colorado Restaurant Association question, and I have read that answer. And I actually think I have it up here on this stack of papers here, let me get over up. here. You keep talking. No, 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 don't get up. Okay. But what, what I want to do is get that research, and let's address that. I think that's a great topic. We'll do it Monday on the Modern Eater Show. Why don't sure. we do that topic? Um, and, and I'll get back to you on the answer to that. I'll email you the link. But I really think you have to identify them. You have to report that that's happening at that point in time, and then there are certain other. I think you got to close down for five days or a week, well, and you can't bring any of the same employees back in. Well, if there. that's the case, uh, more and more uh, folks are going to test positive for COVID, and that's going to do a lot of damage to a lot of places. Yeah. So let's, yeah, good smirk on your face there, Larry. A zinger right at the All end right. like that. Zinger. Why All couldn't right. you lead with stuff like that, Larry? Come on, baby. Uh, <laughs> le- for Larry Hurst, for Jay Parker, for Brian Freeman, have yourselves a good weekend. Stay cool. Happy birthday. Thank you, brother. To the- you. <laughs> Happy, Happy birthday. birthday. The Modern Eater Show to continues. You. We'll see you next Monday Happy right birthday. here at 2 p.m. Right. on the Modern Eater Show. Look at your screen.